Okay, so question seven, the final one. L, M, N, and P are straight chain organic compounds. Um, and the flow chart shows some reactions. So, analysis of compound L shows the following. Um, and I've got some infrared spectroscopy. What can I learn from here? Right. I've got a polymer being formed here. So what must N be? N is going to be an alkene. I've eliminated water here. So elimination of water from L would suggest that this is an alcohol. And that makes sense. So I've got an alcohol group here, which I can eliminate to give me an alkene. And that gives me a polymer. And I've got a dicarboxylic acid here as well. So how can I put all these pieces together? I've got an infrared spectrum of L now. Look at this boy here. That is definitely the OH from a carboxylic acid. There ain't no doubt about that. So you've got a nice broad OH from a carboxylic acid group there. That's what you're looking for. This boy here has got to be a C double bond O, hasn't he? I mean, that is no problem at all there. And it actually looks like I've got a couple there, haven't I? I've got two absorptions going on there. So let's work our way through this. First of all, calculate the empirical and the molecular formula. So uh, I've got carbon, I've got hydrogen, and I've got oxygen. I've got 40 grams of 40% of carbon, 6.67 of hydrogen, and 53.33 of oxygen. Um, that ain't no good to me. I've got to convert them into moles. So I do that by dividing by the relative atomic mass. That comes to 3.33. That is obviously still 6.67. And this boy is 3.33. Divide by the smallest one, 1, 2, 1. So my empirical formula is CH2O. If you add all of that up together, that gives you a molar mass of 30. They told me the molar mass is actually 90. And therefore, you times all of this by 3 to give me C3H6O3, like so. So that's my molecular formula. Okay, so what do I know so far? I've got to get the structures of L and M. Well, I know the formula of L is C3H6O3. Okay. And um, if I go through the spectrum, I have got an IR showing me a peak from 1550 to 1800, which is my C double bond O. I also have a very broad peak from 2300 to 3700 which is my OH in C double, in my carboxylic acid group, like so. Okay, so <coughs> I also know from looking at the reactions, it's got to have an alcohol group in, um, because I could eliminate water to give me an alkene. Um, and I also know it's got a primary alcohol in it, because it can be oxidized um, to give me a dicarboxylic acid. I know I've got one carboxylic acid in, but that second reaction that we looked at, if I just go back to it, here, gave me a dicarboxylic acid. So L I know has one carboxylic acid, but M has got two carboxylic acid groups. So what am I left with? Well, I know I've got three carbons, so let's draw my put my three carbons in, like so. It's got one carboxylic acid group, like so. The OH group, the other OH group must be on an end carbon because it can be oxidized to give me a carboxylic acid. So I think that would be L. C3, O3, H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's looking good to me. Um, when I go to get N, 
N is the elimination of H2O, which will be that. So that is L. N is going to be have a double bond here, like so. Um, and I've eliminated OH like so. And M is going to be my dicarboxylic acid. So I've oxidized this one here. So I'm going to have two carboxylic acid groups like so, where I've oxidized that to give me that. Um, and then I think as well it wants an equation for the reaction of L to form N. So I'm going to start with C3H6O3. It goes from a primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. So I need to add two square bracket O's and that's going to give me C3H1234 O4 and it's also going to give me water as well. Okay, determine the structures of N and P and estimate the number of repeat units in P. So N, you've got your double bond, you've eliminated that um, OH group. So you've got your pop your double bond there and that's what you've got. Um, I obviously determined the structure of N in the previous question because I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, so that was N there. But P, if you add all of that up, you get that to be 72. If you take a 10,000, which I believe it was, which was the um, MR of polymer P, divided by 72, you get it to be 139. It's got to be a whole number. It doesn't come out to be exactly that, but um, 139 gives you um, the nearest whole number. Um, so, write an equation, so I'm going to take N of those. So, N, whoops, whoops, okay. Um, and that is going to give me, remember it just opens up, like so. Keep it as an H shape, it makes your life so much easier. Put your square brackets around like so, and then you put an N there. So don't forget your Ns. Um, you start with N number of those, and then you get a length of um, N, a chain length of N length.